I need to make some questions because we, we record this meeting and I'd like to know if everyone agreed to be recorded, to be here, if you appear, if it's okay for you, in the, you can just say, answer yes or sim. A gente tem que, que gravar, a gente está querendo gravar o máximo que a gente pode das apresentações, mas para isso, como é interativo e como tem outras pessoas, a gente precisa de pedir a sua permissão. Aí, se vocês puderem dizer sim, yes, é, it would be great. If no, it's okay too. So, yes or no? Yes, which is right here, which yes. Podem escrever no chat também, como a Ruth. You can write in the chat. Yes, thank you. Carl, it's okay for you, we record. Yes, it's okay. Okay, thank you. So, it is the formalities we need to, to make sure we everyone agree. So, Bella, Bella will talk for us the first session of the Conf Festival about creativity. I'm super excited about. I pass the word for you, and I'm here for any support I can give to you. Thank you very much, Lisanda, and thank you all for coming to join this talk. And for me, I would like to start uh, saying thank you to Lisandra, my dear friend who invited me, who showed me this nice event and also, of course, for this beautiful field of the Dragon Dreaming that is uh, changing a lot of lives and can change and contribute a lot to the world. I would like first to introduce myself a little bit so that you can understand where I'm, I come from and what I know to talk about what I am going to share with you today. I am a professor at the University of Brasilia in the Faculty of Communications for 24 years. I work specifically in the area of visual language in the Department of Publicity. And I am assigned for many years already the discipline creativity in publicity. So it's part of my field of work and part of my field of, of research as well. But I have a multidisciplinary um, uh, path of knowledge, of development. So I also have made a PhD in history and I am a systemic psychologist in the approach of Bert Hellinger, uh, who was the creator of family constellations and the guest house therapists. So I use all these knowledge in my discipline, in this um, field of knowledge and research and creativity. So I don't use and I don't teach my students only techniques, but I also take them into this beautiful adventure of self-discovery and which was indeed beautifully introduced by Mr. Croft today and I was really surprised because this hero journey that we also call monomyth that is this um, uh, how can we say this storyboard this this basic story that is under all stories is also part of the content that I teach to the students which is very important, not only for our social actions, but also for our inner development and for our uh, work in the world. So I have um, more or less organized the PowerPoint presentation for you. I would like to share that with you, but I will allow myself to talk about some other things that I haven't put in this uh, presentation due to this beautiful introduction, introduction of Mr. Croft. So, so I put this um, title to this presentation, Creativity, the answer to all questions. But actually we need to start by 
each one of us that is here, or maybe one of you that will be hearing this on YouTube later, what is creativity for you? Do you consider yourself creative? Do you consider that these ideas come from somewhere else, or do you have to make a lot of effort to be creative? So this is a very important uh, starting point because creativity is not a concept so um, so well understood. And when we go to the meaning of the word, we know that this is the ability to produce or use original or unusual ideas, for instance, as it's stated in the Cambridge Dictionary. But imagine the ability to produce or use original or unusual ideas. Isn't it very hard to produce something original? Can we really produce something new that has not been produced yet? Can we create, make something new, invent something? This is already an ontological question about who we are and uh, what is our uh, place in the universe. So uh, we need to know that this uh, concept of creativity is actually something new in history. Uh, Professor uh, Richard Foster, and you may find a lot of, about him um, on YouTube and on the internet, mentioned that this word create was created, invented, together with the word science in the 14th century. And before that, th there was this prevalent, this major idea that nothing in the world could change. So this whole concept that seems so, to be so precious for us right now, so important for us right now, facing this climate change and facing this coronavirus crisis and all these situations that are involved in the, 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 the present moment that we are living, actually is something very recent in history. As you see, and also this uh, concept has changed along the time, like in the 17th to the 19th centuries, um, creativity was something considered um, innate. What does it mean? It means that it was, um, it was something that you would have. So I have a potential for being creative all the time. Oh, just a moment, I would like to make this presentation better. Good. Like this is better? Like this is better? Yeah, it's better. Yes. So, so the whole history. So in the 17th to the 19th century, creativity was considered something innate and part of the, our psychological aspects of our personality, of our character. And they developed this interesting theory that we had a genius. Like, do you remember the genius from the lamb? So we would all have this genius inside of us. So we could use our imagination, our judgment, and especially our taste to create something nice and something beautiful, something new, something creative. Anyways, but nevertheless, there were other concepts. For instance, the Greeks, uh, they thought about this idea that there were the muses, there were these spirits that would inspire us. And we also have this very nice um, uh, his, uh, let's say, story about Archimedes. Archimedes, I think it's like this that you say in English, that he discovered the Eureka, uh, they had this insight about how to make the ships float when he was taking a bath. So there was these two ideas. There was this idea that um, I could be inspired by some kind of being or some kind of force, but I also could have an insight that came from observation. And the 15th century, of course, we have Leonardo da Vinci, and Leonardo da Vinci developed and created many things, mostly by observing the nature, observing. So I can be creative as well, when I observe what is around me, I observe what happens with me, I observe the nature. And of course, we had this big invention that was the press invention that made also possible that we could share all these creative uh, things or these inventions of the 15th century and before. 
On the 17th to the 18th century, when I said to you that there was this idea of being a genius inside of me and I need to, do, to make this genius come out, they started doing these marvelous things that was this curiosity cabinet. As you see in this image here, that like, uh, of course, you know that there was this navigation since the 15th century, and they started to collect all these beautiful or interesting or curious things from all over the world. And of course, it led to the idea of the museums. Of course, nowadays we think, ah, how can they have taken all the things from Egypt and put into the London Museum? But nevertheless, this idea of collecting is also an important idea for developing creativity. It's in a certain way a repertoire of information that we also need to have. And we also need to have this information from all over the world. At this moment, we are facing a global crisis. So maybe we can have dragon dreaming from the Australia. We can have the wisdom of our native people. We can have the wisdom of the scientists. And so we need in a certain way to collect all our, um, all our possible uh, approaches to what face what is happening right now. But then in the beginning of the 20th century, we had a complete change on this concept of creativity. You know that Sigmund Freud, the founder of psychoanalysis, considered that we had potions, we had needs, we had an unconscious part of ourselves and our psyche. And this, there was somehow a need to put this creative force out that ultimately would be the sexual energy, the eros, erotic energy that we have. So that's why creativity also means that we have this passion, that we feel so good when we create, when we have this idea that we are inventing something. So in a certain way, creativity in this, in this uh, concept proposed by Mr. Freud would be something that would reconnect us with the pleasure of living. And this is something very important. Why are we, are we in this planet? Why? So part of it is also to, to, to learn facing all the things that we have uh, created ourselves and the, the world is, is giving and offering us in our daily lives and in the nature, but also to explore this fantastic um, ability of feel pleasure and pain. Or maybe, like the Buddhists say, see the pleasure, see the pain, and have a different approach, a more um, neutral approach. But what Mr. Freud said is that we have this potion, we have this need, and this need drives us to do many things in the world. But nevertheless, he also pointed out for the need of self-responsibility, of self-awareness. So, because all the process of psychoanalysis is a process of self-awareness. What is happening with me? What is happening with us? And also self-responsibility is not someone else's fault. It's not the president's fault. It's not the, the, my neighbor's fault. So, my responsibility in the climate change, my responsibility in changing the world, my responsibility in my own life, my words, my actions, my relationships. So, all this came about in the beginning of the 20th century. We also had a psychologist called Alfred Binet, and he developed a completely different approach to creativity. He invented the IQ tests. So he also said that creativity is not only a potion. This is what Mr. Freud said. Um, for Binet, creativity is a type of intelligence that involves memory, that involves perception, that involves different types of abilities that we call today intelligence. It's also a nice concept as well because we can, have the, we can develop different intelligence. We can develop emotional intelligence, a systemic intelligence, complex intelligence. We can develop intuition. So this is a nice way as well of seeing different aspects of something that we 
in a certain way or aim to develop and increase and apply in our daily lives and in our way of being in the world. Then there was this guy, Graham Wallace, and he proposed something that is very common today. The idea that there is a cycle in the creative process. Cycle. And the cycle would involve a preparation and what he said was an incubation. Let's say I go to the bathtub and I don't do anything. I eat or I do something completely different where all this preparation, where I did, I made drawings, I made a repertoire, I talked to people, I brainstormed. I use all these techniques that I teach to my students and that we can all use. But then we left this place or left this time of uh, silence, of doing nothing, of leisure time. And this is very important. Like in the music, we have the notes, but we have the silence. And so we need to pay attention when we have to do some type of project, for instance, you in Dragon Dreaming, that you need to, need to prepare, you need to do, use all the techniques, but there is a moment of meditation. There is a moment of silence. There is a moment of gossip, of, of television, of pop stars, whatever. It doesn't matter. We need to go somewhere for, in the, in the opinion of Mr. Graham Wallace, to be, to be able to come to this insight, this illumination point that is so delicious in the creative process. But then, in the second half of the 20th century, it started growing up the idea that we all had to do analysis. That means, oh, the climate change is due to this, 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 this. But then we have also to make a synthesis. That means what we can find of essential to be made. What is the essence of something? And this process is not first analysis and then synthesis. It's like an ongoing process of analysis and synthesis. Analysis and synthesis. So, and also got very, um, what can I say, um, in, in fashion, like to talk about behavior or character, like uh, what is my comfort zone? How do I get out of my comfort zone? Like my robotic way of, of be, behaving into the world. So creativity would be everything that would take me out of my uh, character, of my standardized personality. So my robotic way of being in the world. This is also very important and Enneagram, as Lisandra knows this very well, is a very nice tool for that. Because at least we understand that there are certain characters, and I am not the only one, the only type of character in the world, and characters are just characters. What does it mean? There is something beyond. I'm not the character. And also there was this interesting idea that we had to realize, to put in action, in action this uh, creative potential that we all have. So we also put this idea into the schools at, until up to a certain point that we had to develop this multiple intelligence. We got to know the importance of connection, of association, like how can I put together Dragon Dreaming, Family Constellations, and um, let's say Hard Science. How can this go together? And how, we, if we have this transdisciplinary approach, multi, inter, and transdisciplinary approach, we can find better creative solutions. And a very important concept in this time that we are living is the idea that creativity is important for problem solving. This is completely different if you imagine that uh, we, we come from the Greeks. Now creativity is the answer to problems. We need creativity to answer problems. This is on an everyday basis and on a global scale. 
And this means as well, for instance, that uh, to be creative, we have to put all that into our daily lives. So, do you remember my question? What is creativity for you? Is an inspiration? It came from the Greeks or an insight. It's something that I learned through observation of the nature, 15th to 16th century, developed through references, 17th to 19th century. It's a potion, it's a need. I want to be creative, come from the 20th century as a type of intelligence, result of a process, also something that results from a personal growth. There is no right answer. In fact, all these aspects are involved in creativity and we can use and access all these aspects of the creative um, uh, creativity. But one thing is very important, and uh, this is something I love to talk to my students, I love to say to them, is that you are the fruit of creativity. Imagine, there is your father and your mother, and from two cells came a third one, somehow a little bit like both, but completely different. So it's something that we all feel inside of ourselves. So the best analogy for creativity is this marvelous act of, 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 of conception. And imagine, this is a conception of the word conception is also the base, basis of creativity. So um, also in this process of connection and reconnection with this creative potential is also a reconnection to our families to our father, to our mother, to our inner nature, to our ancestry. So we are pure creativity, universe is creative. And sometimes I say something that women tend sometimes not to like so much, but I am a woman and I would like to say it because it is an important part. Creation comes always, and your creation as a being with pleasure, with pleasure, at least of the man. Otherwise, there is no creation. So this is an important part as well. It comes in a blessed, and when you see it's a blast of, of the pleasure, it's a blast of light when you see through the microscope what happens in the cells. So this is something that is in the beginning of the uh, conception act and the creativity process. So there are two very important things involved in creativity. One is awareness and another is consciousness. Well, consciousness is when we go to Google, for instance, and we go, what is consciousness? It's one of the biggest open questions in science. You can find answers in the Oriental philosophy, in the religions, in neuroscience, and each person in a certain way developed a concept of what is conscious, but what is effect? We experience our being in the world through consciousness. And what Bert Hellinger, the creator of Family Constellation, discovered is how our consciousness works in the relationship. Sometimes we have bad consciousness, sometimes we have a light consciousness, and most as Freud also discovered, and Mr. Jung as well, that we are drive, driven by strong forces that, that are not only ours, but are transgenerational forces. So when it, we face the climate change issue, for instance, that was the opening of this festival, how much of it is due to our acts? How much of this? is due to our parents, how many more generations. So how much of it we really can change? We really can change. And what Bert Hellinger says is that it's little. We have little uh, free will or probability or possibility more to say the right word, possibility of change. But it doesn't mean that this small part is not important. And why this is a small part? Exactly because there is this strong transgenerational force 
and also not a strong transgenerational force, but we have to understand that we are uh, under the influence of a much, much bigger universe. So how can we really know what is moving us into this or that direction? And even though if we look to the climate change, it's very interesting. Once I was in this native um, council of grandmothers, and there was great grandmothers from all over the world. They were from Africa, from the Eskimos, from Brazil, from all the, all the worlds, from, from, from native cultures. And very interesting, we're talking about climate change in a, such a difficult, bad, hard way. And this grand, a grandmother from the, from the North Pole, from the Eskimo people, and she said, ah, this idea is very, very old in my people. This is the good time for us. When the, the sun is coming and when the ice is, will be melting, it's in our mythology. So for them, climate change means something completely different. And this is very important in the creativity process because if we are just focused on our way of seeing things, we cannot really be creative. We are focusing in a very small part. Uh, one of these days, I was invited to this live about the ancestors, the importance of the ancestors and the importance of the native people. And they invited many people to talk, some of them that have stayed a little bit of time with the native people and some native people, that indigenous people. And one of the people was saying like this, ah, now, they will change everything because the indigenous people are getting in contact with white culture. And then the native guy said something that was astonishing for some of the people, not for me. He said, come on, I am indigenous, but I am a lawyer. I use the internet. So where is really this indigenous identity? Where is this biodiversity is like the old, like before 15th century said, like a non-changeable thing? No, we all are evolving. And this awareness process is very important concerning that because we have our consciousness, but most of the time we are not conscious of the consciousness. So that's where it comes awareness. In Portuguese is dar-se conta. There is not such a word in Brazil for awareness, but it's like when I take into account what happens in my consciousness, what happens in my inner world. Don't take what consciousness says to me as the truth. This means, oh, I have bad consciousness, so I did a bad, something bad. No, consciousness, this is what Bert Hellinger discovered. It's like a sense we have that when we are out of balance in our relationships, we feel bad consciousness, a heavy consciousness. And when we have credit in our relationships, we have light consciousness. So very important point to be creative is not to take consciousness, as the law or the truth and then we can come to this beautiful universe and understand something very important and that i think lisandra said to me that you also use this idea this concept of aha um, in dragon dreaming is that there is a part that we we know that we know i know that i know something i know that i can drive I know that I can write, I can talk about creativity. And this part is a zone of no creativity. This is what I know that I know. And worse than that, I know that I know and I think this is the only truth. This is the worst part of this part that I know. It can take sometimes some kind of tyranny inside of us. I know this is the truth. So no creativity, this is a comfort zone. But then there is another part that sometimes when you're a little bit more humble that we know 
that we don't know. What does it mean? I know that I don't know about that. So I ask my friend, I research on the internet, I search to grow as a person, I make some effort. And this is a very important part that takes us to the unknown. There is then another important part that is what we don't know that we know. This means, for instance, when I come to my class, my first class on visual language, for instance, I ask my students to make an abstract drawing, painting actually, with, and they make this painting and they said, oh please, this needs to be absolutely abstract. And then when they come with this drawing, this abstract, abstract drawing, they start getting to know what happens with the red, the yellow, the colors, the shapes, the lines. And then they discovered that they already knew something about visual language. So most of creative, creativity techniques that we have, like brainstorming, mind mapping, six heads, divergent thinking, all that takes us to this path that we don't know that we know. Can you understand? So take out from our inside some kind of knowledge that we have about the issue that we need to understand in a different way. And they are very useful, all these creativity tools and techniques, and we can one day talk about all of them, and for sure you can find a lot on the internet, don't need me to teach as well. But nevertheless, we have this very special, precious part that we call this what we don't know that we don't know. That my friend Lisandra said that when we arrive to this point is our aha! That is something that I don't know that I don't know. And this is 99.99999 of everything because the universe is so big, isn't it? So this is the realm of the infinite possibilities of the pure force. And uh, we call it in the family constellation, the field, which is a concept that comes from the physics, but also was applied in, in um, psychology, in history, in biology. We are connected by a field, a field of information, a field of something that we really don't know. And it's also not a very a new idea. We, we can go to the, to the Indians in India and they would have in their philosophy the idea of an ether or this substance that connects all of us that you may say that's an energy or that is God, but I will call it creative force. So there is a creative force that unites us all and has infinite possibilities. But how do I, we access this field of information? How we get to this point is this the idea. So we have two paths. We have two paths. Um, nowadays, we mostly are connected in our studies at the school. Muito bom do Murilo Gama, não sei se você ouviu falar dele. Eu tenho aula de uma disciplina que eu estou fazendo de. Bela, eu pus mudo todo mundo, que alguém saiu do mudo, então você tira o seu mudo, por favor. Agora está todo mundo mudo. Espera aí, eu mamudo você. So. Oops. Não, Bela, vai você, ei, desculpa, aí. Basically, the scientific path is our major path of knowledge. What does it mean? It means practically something like that. Um, I would study coronavirus or I would study the climate change and then I would study uh, a lot about coronavirus. I would study a lot about biology. I would study sometimes with, together with other colleagues 
and I would go for all the papers. Oh, that means getting more information, getting more information and going to the details of certain situation. But even though phenomenology is a scientific path and it was developed by, uh, uh, we say that Edmund Russell, but there were people before him, there's a mathematician, Phenomenolo phenomenology somehow subverts, inverts science because it's a different path of knowledge. Well, phenomenology, this word, is the study of the structures of consciousness as experience from the first person point of view. That means that the, the, the focus of phenomenology is to understand how phenomena is felt by us in our consciousness. So that's how Bert Hellinger actually understood that a bad consciousness doesn't mean really that we did something bad. Because he observed the effect of something in our inner world. And this is the, the path of observation and of acquiring knowledge that we can have through phenomenology. And the, the father was Edmund Russell, and I particularly we will be talking to you about the path that Bert Hellinger developed, uh, which um, is, was the creator of Family Constellation, died last year. Well, Bert Hellinger said something very important, that the prerequisites for this different way of getting to this part of that we don't know that we don't know. So there are prerequisites to, to get into this realm of infinite possibilities. And the prerequisites, I tend to say that as we, I use the, the, the five fingers of the hand. So first thing would be beyond um, judgment. And this is beyond knowledge as well. That's why I have six points here beyond judgment, because can you see, uh, we live and see, for instance, through the help of light. So basically, I see the nature through light and darkness, and I experience things in a certain way, in the similar way, putting this is good, this is bad, climate change is bad, climate change is good if I'm an Eskimo. But is there a possibility of going beyond this judgment? And this judgment is not only a moral judgment, it's the judgment that is uh, intrinsically implied in, in when we name something, when we when attribute a quality to something. So when I say climate change, I'm already assigning a name for it. But maybe this is not the proper name. Maybe this is something completely different and I even have to open myself up to this idea that is something that I don't really know what it is and I give this name climate change and then I have to go to the second part of the judgment which would be uh, cl climate change is bad and so I have to fear climate change because it's so awful or I have to pity those who doesn't have who doesn't have a home and all the, the, the animals that will be dying. And um, I have to help. I have to help. I have to, to, because I love, I love people, I love nature, I love the world. And so I have to, to do something. And so I put my intention. But the idea of the phenomenological path of knowledge is that we have some kind of purification. The idea is really a path of purification, of purification of images, of judgments, of fears, of feelings, of this compassionate love that wants to help in all situations, because sometimes best helps not to help. So the whole idea is that we have to purify ourselves, our ideas, our feelings, our thoughts, to really be open to this unknown. So this idea of purification opens and going beyond duality 
is the prerequisites are the prerequisites to a, to access this unknown infinite possibilities and the path the way to that after i put myself into this position is to get in contact in contact with this field of information also another good way of doing this is uh, 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 doing open questions for instance but having a says that he stayed six and a half years almost seven years asking himself what is consciousness what is consciousness what is consciousness so what is climate change what is my let's say mission in the world or whatever but it's something that you have to keep doing for quite a while but with no intention of receiving an answer the answer is a blessing the answer is something that emerges and it can emerge in any way it can emerge on a commercial at the tv it can emerge on a talk it can emerge we don't know it's a blessing it's a miracle and this miracle is mostly and can, and can be best described by a change in perception this is what is like there in a very old book that i have and it's called Corsi miracles maybe some of you know about this book but a miracle is a change in perception and so if i look to the climate change and i don't see it as bad or as good it's already a big change in perception so what is really waiting for me and for us in this moment that we are living so we need to be open and to be also able to connect ourselves to this big 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 force of creative force of the universe and mostly do our part do our part in the reconnection and this reconnection has to do basically starts with one person and i'd like to know if you know who is this wonderful person that is the first person that we would uh, need to make some effort uh, of reconnecting and this is an open question but you can ask Carl, Ruth and Lorena and Lisandra so you're here who, who is this person And as I don't can see, Lisandra, if there is an answer, please. If not, we can keep. Uh, My mother. My mother. Yes. And imagine why? Why is the mother? Because the mother is the person where we have uh, experienced unity. We have experienced unity. We have experienced the sense of being connected. So when we reconnect to our mother, and that means purify all these ideas that we have about our mother as well, not only about climate change, but about this person that is so close to us, so close not only because she's our mother, because she is in our whole body. So reconnect to our mother, reconnect to our father is making a deep reconnection inside of ourselves and reconnection to the mother is very important and then we can say like we have a teacher a very important master called Claudio Naranjo me and Lisandra and he said There's, there is this a patriarchal patriarchal is that what you say um, culture that we are living that exploits nature that drives us to more profit more profit more profit but is really what we need so in a certain way the reconnection to the mother the reconnection to the feminine needs to come first first because she came first and also because in this moment is the most basic reconnection that we need to underdo or undergo inside of ourselves and outside in the world and so maybe this big 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 change 
outside that we all need and that there is measured, like Mr. Croft said, we have to put this carbon dioxide less like this and like that. This small thing that we need to start is about reconnecting to our mother. Reconnecting to our mother, or I would say, um, let's wake up from the dream of the disconnection. This would be another approach of the same issue. Remember that we are all connected and mostly connected to this lovely person, which is our mother. So we also can not only reconnect to our mother, but we also can use this idea to reconnect transgenerationally to our family and to our ancestors, to the whole humanity, to the universe, and also very, very important in uh, everyday basis. Look, we have Greta, Greta Thunberg, isn't it? She's 16. She has a contribution. She is from one generation. One kid is another generation because uh, um, on previous days we used to say that the generation would be like 15, 16 years. But nowadays with the big change that we are facing, some pedagogues, they say that generations are changing so fast that we could say that like a child from seven would have an important contribution and then Greta from 16, and someone from 20s, and someone from 30s, and so on. So we need on this practical basis that we are living in, in, the, in facing our problems, like climate change, to count on the intelligence, on the knowledge of each generation, living generation, and also the ancestors from the old generation and of course this reconnection that we are saying to our mother we will put this reconnection to our grandparents to the older generations and in a certain way heal social trauma because what is happening today climate change or anything that is happening with you with your family have roots have roots in the past and this information, and, and I, I would like to say something. I say roots in the past, but actually it's something. Was there really a past? Is there really a past? We are in a certain way in a time that we are even thinking about that there is a need to change our approach to time. And if all this information were together, like the seven chords theory in physics, like there were multiple dimensions and things were happening at the same time. So when I change the way I look to my mother, the way I see my mother, I've changed the past because I don't see the past the same way. And when I change something now, I'm changing the future. So the thing is, the really, power the real power is in the present is in the present is in this in the way that i approach the things that i relate to and so that's why that having it says it's so important this purification process so creativity oh i'm sorry oh creativity is not only the answer of all questions it's also the source of all questions. That means that um, all questions that we can make, all the answers that we can give are part of this amazing, incredible, creative force of the universe. So what we need to do? Be open. This openness that I have somehow taught you five prerequisites and also wait because on this phenomenological path of knowledge, there is a very important time of waiting, of doing nothing. Like in this creative process that I have all mentioned here. It's like, I wait because somehow the answer will come. I will be dreamed. I will be moved by something much deeper. So I wait and I trust that at this 
creative needed answer. There's no creative needed answer for this moment would be coming for me and for all of us. So connect and act would be my final word. But first connect, first connect, wait, trust, and then act. But act looking very far where I want to get. Maybe not. Maybe just a small little step that would take me to a small other little step. So instead of looking to the far future, I looked to the close future. What are you going to do with all of that that I have said to you after we finish this talk? More or less like that. So thank you very much once again, Lisandra, and everybody that is joining me here today and that will probably and watching this later. Thank you, thank you very, very much. And now I'm open to questions and then if we have some time, I can make um, an interesting inner journey. Dela, can you stop Practical to, Can you stop to share your screen for people to see you? Yes. Yeah. There is uh, someone, Lisandra. Um, what? Lauren said, extraordinary, ah, useful. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think the YouTube videos will be in Dragon Dreaming Brazil channel, YouTube. And if I make sure it is available for people at the translations. Okay. So, if there are no questions about it, don't you want to know anything about it that I said? You want to ask me more? My name is also Isa Google. You can type there. Mm. Hello. Hello. Uh, is there is there's going to be a, a Dragon Dream meeting here? Yeah, it well, okay. it, we started to where uh, one it's 6 p.m. Europe. I don't know where you are in Spain. Uh, in Spain. So now we are, seven, in, yeah, we are in the end. It is the one of the sessions for okay. the name is Creativity. Has also other sessions uh, happening at the same time. Okay, so we're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to see the, the schedule to, to, yeah, to it know is in the, where I am. <laughs> <laughs> it is in the, do you have the, the website? Yeah. Yes, I, I'm doing the same, uh, the same thing at the same time. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, I'm going to, to, to look at it. Yeah. Bye. So, Bella, I, I have a question. <laughs> I like mm -hmm. the idea to have a question. Uh, maybe I have re reflection and I also would like to hear your perspective. Just a second, let's put it because I'm here. Just a second. Um, I, I see also in my, in my practice, I'm sure you too, and the people try to looking for outside all the time or out, uh, looking save the earth save the nature, save the, the poor people, save, save, save. But it is, you, you mentioned a little bit, before we see the CO2 or before you save, the, let's come inside. And the challenge I, I perceive is how to make this recognition about first of all i need to look myself and then i can change my perception and see what really needs to be done outside so my my reflection is that and how challenge is to make this way 
around, you know, to come for me to make sense my help outside hmm? or to do some, something outside. Uh, in Dragon Dream, I also speak, uh, talk so much about this dialogue. You no, know? I go in, I, I come for, for, for me as individual, but then I, I, I have this dialogue with the environment. And my question and my, what I would like to hear from you is how you, you work with your students or your clients to make this perception. Look, we need first of all to change the direction for them to go and can do something. And the also, if you can say something about this concept of help. Yes, please. Very, very, very important. And Beth Hellinger has developed a lot um, concerning help. But I'd like to start first uh, explaining how I do things. Uh, the first thing is that I teach students from 18 to 27. This is my work at the university. This is one type of work. And then I have my other work as a psychologist, as a family constellator, and this is a completely different type of work because there are also different ages. So what can I say? Uh, the way to teach and the way to make uh, people understand the same message is completely different. This means that for 17-year-olds, sometimes they, they don't want so much to look to the inside. They don't want to go for these inner journeys and to reconnection with mother, reconnection with father. This is nothing. But when you say, uh, are, what is the president that you are going to vote? Ah, then they love. If you talk about climate change, they love. So the idea is basically that you need to talk. This, this narrative, this teaching way would be Connect, in connection with the person and with the place, of course. One thing would be you giving a dragon dreaming workshop in Brazil, as you know, and something else in Europe, and something else would be to a native person. So I adapt very much what I do concerning to where I am. So very important would be this flexibility. And so I use different techniques. I can give a speech like I did like that. I can give... I can go for the creative techniques itself. And from the creative techniques, I take what is really important in the terms of personal growth or in terms of getting an open uh, view of the world. That is something that is good for dragon dreaming because you already have a lot of techniques and of procedures, process. So maybe you take from this to something bigger. But considering my other work, and I'm starting to do that work as well in the university. For the first time, I will be offering a discipline on the university, on a public university. We're going to have a discipline about uh, Hellinger Ciencia, which is the theoretical background of family constellations on the, on the university level. So then on this, I, this type of work, I work with family constellations, but I work with something that I love at this moment. And I think this is very um, powerful and that's the experience I would like to propose to you. I take people into inner journeys. What is that? Imagine, if you close your eyes right now and we, we can make it now, let's make it and then I explain. Let's make a little bit of an experience and then I explain what I do. So I can do with you, with my clients that I have online. So first of all, first of all, we sit straight. We sit straight, the hands like this, so that we, we have all the energy inside on the top of your legs, and you sit straight, and with the open eyes yet, still, Lisandra, we put the air out. And this is very important. First, the old out. So we put the air out through the mouth, and we put the air in through the nose. And we do like that for a few moments, a few breaths. And then we close our eyes and we don't control the breath anymore.
and for a very few minutes, we're going to be in silence. And now, with the closed eyes, you're going to look at your mother. If by any chance you, you don't know your mother physically, you imagine your mother. Pay attention if you can see her. How is her facial expression? Her size. Is she bigger than you? Are you bigger than her? Are you close to her or not? Do you look at her or you look at someone else? Do you feel any movement towards your mother or far from her? If you would do a movement, with which movement would it be? Is there something that you would like to say to your mother? Now, only in your thought, without saying anything out loud, say thank you to your mother. Pay attention if these words change something in the image, in yourself. Smile to your mother. Mm -hmm. 
look beyond your mother. What is beyond your mother? Where did life come from? Say thank you for this infinite creative force. If you can do it with your heart, and you look to your father, Pay attention how he is, how far he is from your mother. How far you are from him. and bow to this life force, make a bow that united these two persons, these two families. And if you can, Say thank you. And smile. Now you put all the air out through your mouth, the air in through your nose, and it slowly opens the eyes. So, I work with inner images on a very experiential way, taking people to see the images and to change these images through establishing a dialogue. And in this case, we did something very brief and guided, but in general, what I do is I ask, how is your mother looking like? What would you like to say to your mother? And then I take these people to experientiate this reconnection. And each one of you can feel how are you right now after 10 minutes. And the changes are amazing, amazing. And I tell you, when I take people into this guided journey, I, I say inner journeys, you cannot believe the images that are inside of us. Because now I'm taking you to see the mother and the father 
but sometimes comes crazy images. And these images are the basic language of our unconscious. And so this is the way of changing, or on a, one of the ways of changing these images that moves us in a deep way. So this is one of the ways I work with my clients, I work with groups, and we can change something very basic inside that would have an effect in outside. Thank you, Isabella. It was nice. Um, so we can open more few minutes if people. Okay, Loris has a question. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah thanks. Can you hear me? Um, okay. Uh, so what about with, with politicians? Would it be good to do this exercise with uh, politicians? <laughs> yes, yeah. this would be very good with all the images that you have inside. But mm -hmm. I tell you something. Basically, um, our images or our relationship with authority has much to do with our relationship with our father. So it's like you, you achieve big changes in um reconnecting with the father and the mother and all the authority problems that we might have in society or in our close relationships they are 99 percent solved when we are better with our father this is very yeah. interesting because, because, because it makes, yeah, makes solution easier can yeah, you understand? I, yeah i mean because i i'm a, an activist um, and uh, we are suggesting some um, councils, uh, different councils, uh, to do some workshops to become aware of the um, climate emergency. Uh, but um, for me, it's very important this inner part. Um, I work with that as well to. Uh, kind of mindfulness and humor and I do some a very a very a hard president at this moment in Brazil. You know it's a very yeah. hard president. But it's very interesting because this president has has polarized our society. And so in all the families you have some fanatic people to this guy and some other they hate this guy. So also the idea is also to put like this, to be a little bit Buddhist-like, as you say, in the mindfulness, to go one step, and I keep saying, oh, what do I like in the president? And this guy that in general, I, I, I think, oh, he's awful. But then I make the, the, the conscious effort of enjoying something in him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I, this I, is very important. And, I totally and agree, this, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's a way of connecting with, with, with him and with the people who are uh, synchronized or synchronized with, with him, you know. Uh, and because also if you do this, uh, then maybe they will also open, you know, to, to you, to what you've yes. got to say, you know. So you open to them and aspects in them they were open to. Uh, okay. How do I apply that? So, are, are you? Uh, do you? Um, your sources are, are they just uh, the constellation, or is it also Buddhism or uh, Qigong or something like this? Uh, many, many sources. Many, many sources. For instance, I I got to know Lisandra in the Gestalt, in the in the um, psychotherapy in Claudio Naranjo's uh, school. So I also have a very wonderful work with psychoactives, which was my PhD and my post PhD work. So I have family constellation, cost communications, everything that I feel driven to, 
At this moment, Lisandra is asking me, oh, we'll come and Sufi, Sufi stories. So let's go for Sufi stories. So it's not only that. It's, mm -hmm. I, I let myself be, be moved by my soul. And this question you put is very interesting. And Lisandra, I didn't forget your second question. I will come to, ask, to answer you. Uh, this question is very important, what you said. Because, for instance, um, I have a friend who, who is a lawyer. We call it systemic lawyers in Brazil. That are the lawyers that are using family constellations into mediation. And she said to me once, I, I know when I'm going to win a case because my client comes to me and says, you have gone to the other side. So you are an activist. Imagine that you would go to the other side and that you would <laughs> be activist for the other side. It's an inner process, an inner process that has a personal integration level, and there is an external integration with a big effect. And here in Brazil, they are saying like this, because this president has 30% of the votes of the population. And so they made a movement like this, we are the 70%, they are the 30%. And there are the more radicals, they are called the 300, 300 people. The more radicals, they are the 300. And I said, come on, am I 70%? Am I 30% or 300? I am 100%, we are 100%. Unless we get to this point, that in fact Yuri Gagarin took us because when he got out of the earth and he said, oh, this is a whole planet, blue. This is the first time that was the, 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 the consciousness of the 60s. Do you remember like the love, love and, and peace and flowers? So this, the unifying consciousness. And so when I said, and I, I tried to make two videos actually on Facebook and I said, we are 100% and people know, you are crazy, you are crazy. We are 70. They are fast, fascist, fascists. This doesn't take anywhere because it doesn't take us from the duality. That's the point. Yeah, I totally agree. Just uh, to finish my, uh, uh, I, I just comment. Uh, I, 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 my intention, well, my intention is to uh, connect the inside and the, and the outside you know, through, through uh, shows and, and workshops and so forth yeah basically for schools uh you know uh, and teachers and uh, also parents uh, and also the students but um uh, and one I, one of the ways of doing it is through a video and my intention is to do three characters and one is an activist and this is why i left my beard so long and then the other one will be a meditator which says, oh, just purify your mind and everything will be pure. Don't worry about politics, don't worry about this. And, that. and then there would be the middle, middle guy. And the three, I'll, I'll do it myself. You know? And there you are in a Zoom, uh, in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> it's hard to record each one uh, by separate. No? And that's the middle way. So he, he connects both of them. So it's great to have this inner calm and perception of, a pure world and so forth but you need to move also and the ones who move yeah. you know uh, they need to develop this inner part you know so uh, that's it my intention is, is to help with these ways like that, like that video <laughs> and and that's a, a archetypes and enneagram are very good for developing these characters and the the the, the script the script that's what john croft said there's only one script. Try to make a change in this script that is called the monomyth or the, the, the hero journey. Change, try change in making the script. Actually, uh, this is very interesting. This is very, very interesting. And also how to put this in action. You're saying about making this Zoom conferences, but on publicity, on advertising, in communications, we are doing transmedia storytelling. What is that? And how do I use Zoom for something, I use WhatsApp, social media, on, or performance on the street, and I connect all that into action in the world. So this is also another world of things that we could talk about.
but indeed what you're doing is exactly the same thing. Well, I'm just worried about the time. Because yes, the time and so let me talk very briefly about health yeah. because what you already yeah. asked. Beth Hellinger has developed a lot of th uh, thought and, and ideas about helping. And helping is an art. It's an art. And the first, an art and an art that has principles. Because one of the things that Beth Hellinger discovered is that on, only love is not enough. There's something that comes before love. And comes before love is order. Order comes before love. And order and love are as like when you have, like me here, a glass with water. Love is water, but order is the glass. It's what can keep the water inside. So there are orders in the relationship and are orders that make help effective. And one of the main orders is like, I just can give what I have. And this is the first order. I just can give what I have. It seems very simple. But if you look to the economy that we have right now, uh, how many um, soaps we get on the supermarket? How many soaps I need? And how many I get? And sometimes I don't have soaps and I want to clean the world. So first, I need to know what I have, what I need and get what I really need and just offer what I really need to offer. And there are five rules and uh, orders of help, as we say. And one of these orders is also just help until the point that it's possible to help. Imagine there is a car accident and someone is there on the floor. You want to help so much, but can I help? Can I move this person? Can I do something right now? So first step is not doing. First step is really getting to know if it is really uh, possible to do something. And when I see this situation, I, instead of doing, I go one step behind. Can I really do something? Is it really best thing to do something? Even though climate change, even though accidents, we have to think about that and something else. When I help one person, I don't help one person. I don't have one community. I have to think in a broad way. I help one family. I, help, I have to have the systemic perspective of the help. This is very important. I, I have to, to have this perspective on the help. And the other thing that is very important is that from what place I help? Because imagine, you all made this nice inner journey and what was your size concerning your mother? Bigger than your mother? This is a fantasy. This is a fantasy. We are never bigger than our parents. Not because of size, uh, from tall because they are always older so first we have to put ourselves into the reality and work with the reality and also work from adult to adult so this is not a poor community who does not know what to do not undeveloped pure indigenous people that don't know what to do no I, I look at someone on the street and I see the destiny of this person as, as valuable as mine. Even though a crack addicted person, a heroin addicted person may seem very awful conditions for me. This is a, 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 a presumption that we need to get rid to purify myself. My destiny is as valuable as of the other person. And this is an adult to adult help. It's a different perspective on help. I can help this person, but I can first see what help does she really need? Can I 
Can I stand being on the side of someone that wants to die, that takes drugs day and night without doing anything? Is this help? Does this help to be in full presence in front of the suffering of someone? So for this type of help, I need not only this special knowledge, but this special posture of what Bert Hellinger called the love of the spirit. It's a different type of love. It's a love that goes beyond this, this easy help. That is a love that can stand being the side of someone that is suffering and can wait and can be open. And maybe when this person or these situations offers me a possibility to help, then I have something to give. Thank you. So we say a lot, include of our system, no? Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Bella, Isabella, querida, dear friend. I I just want to to ask again because we are recording it to to share in YouTube in the Dragon Dreamy page. I would like to ask if it's okay for all of you, for Loris, have a talk. If it's okay, we we share this video. <laughs> So it's nice to meet you, this group. Some people arrive later, but the video will be there. And thank you, Bella. It was a really inspired session. And uh, I'm the one to thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Best wishes. So enjoy the, enjoy the Con Festival. We have many wonderful sessions. And I hope to see you again. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. I'm I'm in the this for the next session. I'm the host of the next session. But uh, yeah, you are the host. But I think you, uh, just a second.